Hello. Here is the Asamil Yiddish in English. Uh, it's going to be a quick review, and there's a quick side note I want to throw in here. Uh, if you're interested in learning Yiddish, this is probably one of the best or few very good uh, one of the few very good resources available within English to actually learn Yiddish than uh, or because most of the books that are available while there are quite a lot for learning Yiddish or have something to do with the language they tend to be culture plus a few words uh, smaller dictionaries uh, phrase books things of that nature and it's not something you're going to really be able to learn Yiddish with, uh, or language in general. You really need texts and you need CDs, and that's not something these books have or are. Uh, from my understanding, there is a colloquial and possibly a teach yourself uh, Yiddish, and those tend to be pretty good companies as it stands, but uh, Asamil is one of the best, uh, if not the best, uh, for language learning, uh, especially what's available in English and most languages. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in learning Yiddish, I would have to say this is probably one of the very first places you should start. So if you're interested in learning Yiddish, the great thing too about the Asmil series is they introduce you to the scripts or the writing systems of whatever language you're learning. Uh, at least from my experience, always from the get-go. So as you can see here, uh, Yiddish, by the way, if you're not aware, actually uses the Hebraic script and is read accordingly, from right to left. Uh, the difference between Yiddish and Hebraic words are that Yiddish is uh, has the vowels and whatnot, or is uh, pronounced more as you read it, whereas the Hebraic words, uh, which are very frequently occurring in Yiddish, by the way, um, don't tend to be pronounced quite as they're written. They tend to be a little bit different. Uh, the vowels tend not to be there. From my understanding, that's similar to how Arabic is or really was, um, but you know they both write from right to left. So there is there is that, and it takes a little bit getting used to. But uh, there's also one other thing too: the written script, uh, the handwritten versus the printed, are different, as you can see up here. Here's the printed. This is mostly what you're going to be reading, but this is actually how you would be, write it. Um, you don't have to start out with the written, but thankfully uh, they teach you that too. And throughout the book, they re-give the text at the end of every lesson within that script, um, which is actually really nice. It's a good practice. The other nice thing here, uh, since you do read from right to left, they start you out with the first 21 lessons do this. Um, so you would read this Gut Morgen, and they start that under here with Gut Morgen, but from right to left, so that's nice, that helps, it allows you to match each character to each character, or each letter to each letter. And then the other nice thing, as you can see here, this is the first lesson, it's a very, very short lesson, um, but you can see here, they put the Gut Morgen on top, Good Tomorrow, Good Morning, so they give you kind of a direct translation, and then the colloquial translation, whatnot, and yeah, that's one of the great things about this book, and when you get later on here, for example, here is one of the later lessons. Uh, they do not have that after the 21st lesson, uh, starting lesson 22 and above. They don't do that on either page, so you, you'll you have to have learned to read by then, which is fine since, you know, with Asimil you do a lot of repetition. With any language you're going to be doing a lot of repetition. But that is one of the more difficult parts of learning this language. If you know German, the language is going to be much, much easier for you. Um, yeah. By the by, the there are a lot of cultural notes, and there are a lot of, uh, especially at the end, and uh, of every lesson, there tend to be some cultural notes, um, especially every seventh lesson, as those are the grammar, but those are the grammar lessons mostly. There is actually a, I believe I said this already, but a never another uh, another lesson, another dialogue, another a text, and those are usually more cultural aspects of it, like proverbs or this one here, a riddle. And the nice thing about that is they are actually on the CDs as well. 
and they're translated. So this book is pretty thorough. I believe you learned something like 2,000 words. It was circa 2,000 words, something around there. I don't know the exact number, but that j tends to be the awesome mill numbers around there. And here's an example of the written script, and it corresponds obviously to the printed script. The end of the lesson, uh, Austin Mills cartoons, and the nice thing is there is the dictionary in the back, the glossary, uh, which is really helpful since if you ever miss a word and you're not quite getting which word means what, uh, you can simply go to the glossary. So that's Austin Mill Yiddish. I would highly recommend it to anyone interested in learning the Yiddish language. It's probably one of the best available materials uh, in English. Um, like I said, I don't know of any others that are nearly this good that are in English. Uh, anything else I found has been mostly phrase books. So, if you're interested in learning Yiddish, this would be one of the books.